Hi, my name is Tim Wessel. And I'm Robin Risky. And we are with uh, Feet Neighbors, a new group of uh, the Elm Street, uh, Elliott Street, and Frost Street area. And do you want to tell them? <laughs> sure. So um, I work with the state of Vermont as a community organizer. And back in August, right before the flood hit, uh, Vermont, I had gotten a call from a person who uh, owns property and has a business on Elliott Street in Brattleboro and she was concerned about um, increasing crime and alleged drug dealing and just to having a sense that uh, the neighborhood um, had some areas that needed to be improved and so we held a meeting at the Elliott Street Cafe which is a really great location because it's right there in the feet uh, triangle and uh, we invited members of the town to come, the chief of police, the fire chief, the town uh, manager, some select board members, and a couple of neighbors from the uh, Elliott Street area. And um, what came out of that meeting was a sense that the problem wasn't really being identified clearly. So uh, then the flood hit, and there were a couple of months of chaos that, um, came after that, so the, the efforts around the greater Elliott Street area were um, put on hold. And then in the fall, we reconvened and decided to have a survey of the community and hear from them, get a voice basically of the community to find out what did they think was needed to strengthen the community, what were their perceptions of safety issues, what alleged crimes did they think they were seeing, and what recommendations did they have to strengthen the neighborhood. At that point, we decided to expand the focus from just Elliott Street to also include Elm and Frost Street, thus the name um, Frost, Elm, Elliott Triangle. So we, we made it a broader area. We also decided to survey people on all the artery roads as well, so Spring Street and Elliott Street Terrace and some of the other roads that come off the, the edges. So. Um, when I say we, it was a group of volunteers, mostly people who were connected to the neighborhood in one way or another through owning houses there, renting there, or owning a business, or working in the neighborhood. And we, um, in February, interviewed about, well, we, we gave out about 150 surveys and almost 40% of them came back. And we were able to compile a report that we plan to release on May 20th at an event at the Elliott Street Cafe. And um, in that report, what we found was that people really wanted to get to know each other in the neighborhood and to find ways to strengthen the neighborhood. They also asked for more police presence, um, either foot traffic or um, car, or just you know having them be around a little bit more visibly. And they also wanted to see things like slower traffic and more lighting and possibly things like community gardens, block parties, and things like that. So now we have a growing group in that neighborhood. We have a, uh, an email address, which is feetneighbors at gmail.com. And we also have a listserv on Yahoo, um, Feet Neighbors. And so we're really encouraging people who live and work and um, are connected to that neighborhood to come together and essentially have a neighborhood association. And there also are people who want to do a neighborhood watch program in the neighborhood. Um, and so Officer Perkins will be at the meeting on the 20th to talk about uh, setting up an, a night to, to form a group in that neighborhood as well. Uh, we recently participated in Green Up Day and we actually had, we were told by the organizers of Green Up Day that the table that we had at Elliott Street Cafe was the most successful in terms of how many people came and got bags and got involved. And we had about five new people sign up for Feet Neighbors that day as well. And um, it was it was a really great day because people were out and they were cleaning that neighborhood, which is something that people had wanted to see happen. And I think uh, my, my I live on Frost Street, so my uh, I have sort of a, a selfish interest in in definitely seeing an improvement in the triangle, as we're calling it. Uh, and I think the most important thing to me is really just having a venue, uh, a device to get out and to meet the neighbors and to get to know each other uh, and to kind of 
sort of raise the level of community in 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 these on these streets uh, by having things like potlucks and just having starting discussions on hey you know have you seen this odd activity going on here do you know that person do you know who owns that building uh, I'm also a landlord uh, and soon to be a landlord of a, f a couple more buildings on Frost Street so um, so it, I, I just want to sort of help raise the community of Elliott Elm and, and Frost Street um, by just talking to the neighbors and uh, anything from simply if you if you know your neighbors and you know that everyone's walking around and keeping an eye on everything I think it helps it, it helps everybody at once and uh, even if it's simply something as simple as uh, you know making sure we have the sidewalks uh, swept clean of of debris and and snow in the winter time just to make it a pleasant living and working environment in the triangle so we are going to have be hosting a potluck supper on may 20th it's sunday from five to seven at the elliott street cafe and for folks who don't know where that is it's on the corner next to the fire department and tj buckley's and the samuel elliott apartments and um, even if you don't have anything to bring or contribute, yes. you're welcome to come. There'll still be food available for all. Yes, so. we'll be bringing extra food. And um, Dr. Jones, who actually owns that business and uh, has a practice next door, has offered the space to the community, which is awesome. She's also offered uh, to have us paint a mural this summer in that area, in that property area, which is great. Um, so the events from five to seven and basically we're just going to start with a meet and greet and get people uh, Signed in and getting to know their neighbors and then just share a little bit about the recommendations that came out of the survey um, We came up with three areas for the uh, recommendations one something things that we want to ask the town to do things that we would like to ask the landlords to do in the neighborhood and things that we would like to see the neighbors get involved with so we're going to be talking about that and then hearing new suggestions because there are people that either didn't get the survey or had n other ideas since. So that's some of the involvement that we are looking for from the town and from the actual uh, resident neighbors uh, and from the landlords. We'll, we'll be looking at, for instance, issues about lighting uh, because uh, when you're a resident uh, and a landlord, you can address lighting on an individual home basis, obviously, uh, whether it be just adding a uh, motion sensor light that lights up when somebody comes, you know, past the sidewalk, or even a, a lamp post is something I'm considering putting in. Um, and uh, general beautification would be another example of what both landlords and uh, renters and, and owners, homeowners, can do. Uh, just making sure that the trash, when the trash people, you know, throw the trash cans back, they get collected within, you know, <laughs> a certain num uh, number of hours and uh, that things aren't left out on the lawn and, you know, it just looks nicer that way. So that kind of, those, those examples kind of raise the, the, the look of the community and I think it results in a real sort of respect uh, that everybody will start to uh, cultivate for the community. Mm -hmm. I think it's, you know, there, there's always a little bit of a balance because you want to, I would like to see initiatives like this or groups like this all over Brattleboro, of course. I think we all would, but you have to also not reach out too far because then it's, you, you, it's too difficult to try to get to know a neighbor on the other side of town. So we were trying to come up with a way of really making it a fairly compact area um, and hopefully set an example as to how neighbors can get together. I mean, I think informally there's all kind. Of, well, there's the Clark Canal Association mm -hmm. has done a great mm -hmm. job in that area. But there's also informal examples up on High Street. I'm sure neighbors talk to neighbors and uh, when something odd happens, they start chatting about it. And that's basically what we're trying to uh, encourage at least. But right for right now, we're trying to do it in a in a contained area that's, you know, you can bite it off and chew it and, and work on it realistically without expanding it too large, too large of an area. And we do, yeah, we do hope that this will serve as an example for other neighborhoods and what they can do to get together. I know that Officer Perkins has offered to help with Neighborhood Watch all over the area. So any 
any neighborhood that wanted to start that could probably be in contact with him at the police department and say, yeah, we're interested in this. Um, and, you know, and I think that part of this is that, as you were saying, there's sort of this reputation on Elliott Street and it kind of has, you know, this sort of historical reputation. And so part of it is to say, well, yes, we've had this reputation, but I, I've been here 20 years and we've had other Elliott Street uh, groups that have done potlucks and block parties and cleaned up the park and then you know things come and they go and they die out and people move and they you get new people in the neighborhood and um, so I think that it's one of these things it's like weeding a garden in essence you, every year you go back because you know sometimes people will say well we've already tried that we've already done that or well at least we know they're all in one neighborhood as if they are just you know generic group of people and we can keep an eye on them or well, if you clean up Elliot, then you're just going to disperse them somewhere else. And it's like, you know, the attitude that we're taking is that this is a neighborhood that people live. They raise their children here. They're growing old here. They have their businesses here. They're making their lives here. They have community. Um, a friend of mine on uh, Frost Street has a community garden a project. and. So, you know, it's, it, it's where people live. And so that quality of life is just as important for people that live on Elliott and Frost and Elm Street as it is for people that live on Washington or High Lawn or Oak Street, you know. And so what has been considered acceptable in that neighborhood is no longer the case. Like people are saying, no, we live here and we want to claim this and we want the same level of resources going into other neighborhoods. So here's an example. If in my neighborhood, which I'm a couple blocks away, if somebody threw beer bottles off of a porch into the street, the police would be there. The neighbors would be in out, you know, there there would be there would be it would not be acceptable behavior. So that behavior shouldn't be acceptable on Elliott Street or Elm or Frost. Yeah. But, but it's more about that you know, if someone from the town or uh, in official capacity says, well, oh, well, you chose to live here, it's just, that's just not, you know, we want to build relationships with everybody. So, for example, with the police, um, when we did the survey, we asked people about crimes they witnessed or alleged crimes. And then from there, how many of them contact the, the, contacted the police? And... It was such a, a small percentage, we couldn't even put the data in the report because it was so small. And so I think that um, it's not just about enforcement. We're not just saying, well, the problem is that you need to call the police more often, but have a relationship with the police. Let them know who you are. Let them know what you care about in that neighborhood. Let them know what you're seeing, you know, because you have, we have to understand that the police are limited in what they can do as well. You know, so you call the police and say, I know my neighbors are dealing drugs. They can't just go bust into the house and, you know, arrest people. There, there, there has to be investigation. There has to be more information. There has to be um, license plates. You know, there's, there's more that people could be doing to support the police because we don't live in a dictatorship. We live in a democracy and people have rights and we have to respect that. So... And I think, yeah. I'm sorry, that, yeah. that's sort of the idea behind the neighborhood watch concept is that the police are going to be short staffed all the time. I mean, we don't have a large police force and they, they do a great job, but the, the idea of neighborhood watch is that we're the eyes and ears of our local community and, and uh, we can generally keep an eye on things and when something reaches a threshold that we're not comfortable with, we pick up the phone and call the police. and. Uh, and that's a huge help for them uh, to, you know, to ultimately do their job, to have those extra yeah. people. And, and to not kind of just sit back and think, well, the police are not doing their job. Look how terrible the neighborhood is becoming. It's my neighborhood. I'm going to go out there and kind of, I mean, we, certainly not get yourself into a trouble or an altercation, but to, uh, uh, to show that you're watching and to be a presence in the community, mm -hmm. I think, is important. And the police have been um, very supportive of this project. Jean Rin, the chief of police in Brattleboro, has participated in 90% of our meetings and helped write the survey and word the questions about 
you know, did you feel the police responded? Uh, did, was the problem resolved? And so it's been really nice, the collaboration. We have uh, landlords that have been involved. Jason Cooper and his manager, Marty Vallander, have been involved from the beginning. Heidi Flaherty from the Brattleboro Housing Authority has helped to engage people from Samuel Elliott's. Uh, Dr. Jones, Rebecca Jones, has uh, been very generous with the use of her, the Elliott Street Cafe for Frick, our meetings. Frick's and, right, is yep, and Frick has come to some meetings, and Dora Bubalis, who lives on Elliott Street, has also been coming. Uh, Chris and Stuart McDermott, who live on Spring Street, which is right behind BHA, have been very, very helpful, organized the entire Green Up Day, um, and Robert Osier, uh, who works down at Dottie's, has just been very, very helpful with the survey. Um, he had helped with a previous survey um, in Harmony Lot with youth and was very helpful in developing that survey. Um, and so, you know, all of these people together um, have really helped make this happen. We have some new uh, folks involved, Ishana, who lives on Frost Street and some other people who have seen previous media coverage of this event have called and said, I want to get involved. And so it's really growing grassroots. It's really coming out. And you know, my, my goal as the organizer is to be able to leave <laughs> in a couple of months and, and then let the neighborhood completely take it over. So it's been really, it's been a very exciting um, process. I uh, just want to thank uh, Frederick uh, Noyes for putting together our listserv, uh, which again is Feet Neighbors at Yahoo. And um, our email address is feetneighbors at gmail.com. So join us May 20th for uh, a nice informal potluck at the Elliott Street Cafe. And um, don't, uh, if you don't have time to bring any food, that's fine. There'll be plenty for everyone. Uh, and come meet your neighbors and, and learn about feet neighbors. Yeah, five to seven.